Today's feast day, the Feast of Pentecost, that was originally a Jewish agricultural feast, and it was called the Feast of Weeks because it was celebrated 50 days or seven weeks after Passover. And it started as a feast of thanksgiving for the harvest. Now that's gonna make you look very smart when you're watching Jeopardy. (laughs) But as this feast day developed, even amongst the early Jews, it also became a reminder and a celebration of God's mighty deeds. And so, we too celebrate the harvest of our faith and how it has been a nourishment, especially during these times when otherwise we would have withered under the burden of these most difficult days. So this Eucharist that we celebrate today, it gives us a chance to remember what God has done for us through our Lord Jesus. Look around. We celebrate the church that surrounds us in this congregation. We celebrate the spirit signs of wonders that we have experienced in our midst. And we celebrate that we have all been strengthened by those members of our community who serve in ministry, both full-time and the so many volunteers that we have. As a community, we have seen the Spirit's gifts still being poured out on those who gather together in one place. As the disciples were on Pentecost, and as we are this day. Jesus' disciples, they were probably together on Pentecost because that was the next big pilgrimage feast to Jerusalem after Jesus' death and resurrection. Because we're still at the beginning of St. Luke's book, The Acts of the Apostles. And here's where we have that powerful appearance of the Holy Spirit. If this were a TV show, the beginning would say, this episode, the acts of the spirit, because this is early in act one, and already the main character makes a strong entrance. And we will remember this spectacular entrance, and no matter how stellar the other characters in this drama become, we will always remember how it all started. The Holy Spirit came to them first. Pentecost represents God's renewing his promise, his covenant with us. In the Old Testament, at Mount Sinai, people accepted God as their God, and so they became the people of God. And now, through this Pentecost event and the preaching of the disciples to the nationalities that are gathered that day in Jerusalem, the miracle of tongues representing peoples from all around the world, the invitation to become one with God is going to be proclaimed to the whole world. It's an invitation to everybody, including the Gentiles to be God's people. Now you might say, wait, 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 wait a minute. Are these the same disciples who fled and scattered when Jesus was taken captive and killed just 50 days ago? Are they the same frightened group that was huddled behind locked doors for fear of the authorities, which we just heard in the gospel? Are these the ones who could barely speak a correct sentence? Now look at them. They're breaking out of the confines in fear to boldly proclaim the news about Jesus. So what is it that changed them? It's that new life that God's Spirit has given them. They used to be scattered. Now they're a community. 
Now they are drawn together. They are made into a new church by the same God who took the initiative and appeared on Mount Sinai to a frightened and fleeing group of former slaves. In both readings today, 1 Corinthians and the Acts of the Apostle, the gifts of tongues is associated with the Holy Spirit. That gift comes as a sign of authenticity, is a sign of approval. In both readings, everybody, Jews and Gentiles alike, begin to speak and listen in their native tongue. This is a sign, and we're going to see it's a sign especially for Peter, but it's a sign that the Gentiles too are receiving the Spirit and that they also should be baptized. And so, here's the greatest news. As a result, those floodgates are now released and the church is about to be watered by people from all over the world. On Pentecost, the preached message needs no interpreters. Those people understood them in their native language. Nobody was asked to learn a specific, mysterious religious language. The gospel that they preached from Pentecost onwards wasn't a gospel limited to one culture or one manner of expression. To be spoken to in one's own language, it means that the speaker is one with us. The speaker comes from our nationality. The speaker wants to communicate with us enough to come more than halfway towards us. You see, God has removed all the barriers. God has shown appreciation for the uniqueness of each and every one of us. God speaks our language, not as a foreigner, but as one with us. God speaks and acts wherever God chooses to do so. No one has exclusive rights on God. No one church or religious body has copyrighted God. The Spirit comes to where they were all in one place together. That's what we just heard. So doesn't it seem that the chance of catching the Spirit seems really good when we gather together? Just like we're doing right now. We are disciples of Jesus wanting to serve him, aware that we have fallen short, aware that our spirits waver, aware that sometimes we compromise or lose enthusiasm or are distracted, worn down, or get bloated and dazzled by the world's temporary delights. But every Sunday morning, we return to this gathering with some faith guarantees. When we assemble here, and we listen to God's word, and we celebrate the sacrament of the Eucharist, God stirs up that spirit once again. The lead character in this drama enters the scene again today. For here among us are people who have been nourished by God's spirit over an entire lifetime. We are still believing. We are still yearning for God. And we are still trying to be faithful to our commitments. In a fickle world where people all too easily move away from the commitments they've made, we have struggled to proclaim in both word and deed Christ's ongoing life among us. What could be a more telling sign of the Holy Spirit's dramatic but often quiet presence. Because once again, in this assembly today, 
the Spirit is igniting our faith. And then it is stirring us up to share it with those who are right outside those doors.